so I doubt anyone would consider me an authority on etiquette or high fashion. But one thing I do understand is that there are different levels of formality in how one dresses. Different occasions call for different styles of dress. So if you were having dinner with the Queen of England, the expected dress code would be white tie. If you were attending a gala or opera, black tie might be required. Whereas if it's just another day at the office, informal wear or business casual is probably most appropriate. If you're the kind of person who attends all these kinds of events, then to avoid any social faux pas, you'd better own all three types of clothing and know which is expected wherever you're going. So, so far we've been interested in two questions. Why do we want to do hot? And what does hot mean? To answer the latter question, remember that we have three different interpretations of what, what hot meant. We viewed hot as some kind of programming language, we viewed hot as a language for describing higher dimensional spaces, and we viewed hot as a system of logic. In this video, I want to ask a more practical question. How do we do hot? And once again, we're going to have three different answers. Informal hot, computer formal hot, and the deductive system of hot. Informal mathematics is mathematics that's written for humans in sentences and paragraphs. It's meant for people to read. And so this is going to be our primary way of doing homotopy type theory, is informally. And indeed, this is the primary way that any kind of mathematical study is done. As I mentioned, most mathematicians use set theory as their informal foundation. But we're going to be using type theory. And this is a key innovation that has been brought about by homotopy type theory, is the development of an informal style of doing type theory. And let me just again emphasize that here, informal just refers to the bit about it being for human readability. Informal doesn't mean sloppy or unrigorous. You can be completely rigorous, yet informal. But if we want to be really, really certain that we got things right, then we need to formalize our informal work. And so we're going to have two different ways of doing that. Our main one is going to be computer formalization. So we've already seen a little bit of this. Computer formalization is when we write our definitions and our proofs in a computer proof assistant, like Agda or Coq or Lean. And the benefit of doing this is that no matter how long our proof is, it can be checked automatically and quickly by a computer. We don't have to commission a team, team of experts to pore over it. And so remember, this was a central motivation for homotopy type theory, that if our informal theory is type theory, then that makes it easier to transfer our results into a typed programming language, a typed computer proof assistant. And so whenever I say that hot is amenable to computer formalization, this is what I mean. But there's another way of formalizing mathematics in what's called a deductive system. So before there were computers, this was the only way to formalize mathematics, was to write it in a very precise formal language. And so we can do this with hot as well. And so the hot deductive system is written in the form of what are called inference rules, which looks something like this. It's a horizontal bar with some premises on the top and a conclusion on the bottom. And so in theory, if we wanted to, we could string these together to form elaborate what are called proof trees and very precisely formalize our proofs as one of these proof trees. But as you might imagine, this gets a little bit unwieldy because these are hard to typeset and hard to display. So we're not actually going to formalize any proofs in this way. But writing down these inference rules is a useful way to think about our work. So it's a useful way to precisely state certain patterns of reasoning that we're going to be using. It's a, it's a helpful way to reason about the meta theory of hot. So if we're reasoning about hot as a kind of logical language, then this is a uh, helpful way to think about it. And it'll be a helpful way to think about what our computer formalization should be. So we have these three different ways of doing hot. And as with our three interpretations of what hot means, it's going to be really helpful and really enlightening to move between these as needed. So kind of the old school way to formalize a proof pre-computer was to think of an idea and then write it out informally and then 
formalize that proof in a deductive system. So like I said, we're not going to do full proofs this way, but for some patterns of reasoning, we are going to express things as inference rules. The new school way of formalization, the one that Hot really emphasizes, is you have an idea, you write it out informally so other people can read it and understand it, and then to make sure you got it perfectly correctly, you formalize it in a computer proof system like Agda. But another way of reasoning that Hot has really opened up is the idea of unformalization. And so how that works is that, like a programmer, what you do is you come up with an idea and you plug it directly into your computer. And so you formalize first. And then later, you can unformalize by turning that into an informal description or into inference rules in the deductive calculus. But there's no reason to stop there. A lot of times you'll kind of wander back and forth between these different styles of reasoning. So maybe you'll have an idea and you'll start typing it up in Agda to kind of see how it works, but you'll kind of get stuck in a few places or find a few deficiencies. And so to try to understand it better, maybe you'll describe it to your colleagues informally and see what they have to say. And then maybe think about it more. And then try to be a little bit more precise by writing out inference rules to express how this new idea is supposed to work. And then, then maybe try to go back to, to Agda and try to type it up and see how, how the formalization works in the computer. And then at the end of the day, produce uh, informal written work, maybe peppered in with some inference rules, to go along with your computer formalization. And then when you try to disseminate your idea to others, you can give them both the informal write-up and you can give them the computer formalization, so they can use both to help understand it. So these are the kinds of workflows that are opened up by doing hot, is you can kind of move between these different styles of work according to what you're comfortable with and what fits the current idea you're working on. And so a good homotopy type theorist is someone who can move between these different styles as needed and take advantage of whichever one is best. So in these videos, I'm mainly doing informal hot just because I'm describing ideas to you informally. But as you've seen, I pepper in some, some computer formalization. I'm going to continue to do so, especially in this video. And we're moving forward, we're also going to be seeing some inference rules to, like I said, precisely describe certain patterns of reasoning. Before I go on, let me mention that the formalization that I'm going to be using for these videos is available online. And it's largely based on, and in some cases directly copies, the formalization by Egbert for his upcoming textbook, uh, which you can find here. But I make a few changes just for my purposes. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the process of doing hot.